Well, joining us now, somebody who has had an incredible role in building the relationship between India and the United States for several years. Ambassador Atul Keshap has been um, at one level uh, at the forefront of uh, or the face of the United States when it comes, in a sense, to building this relationship. But I can tell you that he's been uh, a backroom uh, operator as well in taking the relationship uh, to where it stands now. Thanks, Ambassador Keshap, very much for being with us. Uh, do you expect um, any serious takeaways from the bilateral engagement between the President and the Prime Minister? Vishnu ji, namaste and swagatam. It's nice to have you here on these shores. Thank you for having me. Yes, I expect quite a bit. Um, I, I don't want to make news ahead of the governments, uh, but I received a briefing earlier in the week that indicated that there's a lot of ambition between both sides. Uh, they're going to issue a, an update to the joint statement that uh, was released during the state visit of Prime Minister Modi in June of 2023. There's going to be a lot of focus on the security aspects, a lot of focus on the technological aspects. Our convergence is increasingly technology-driven because it is trust-driven. And so I think you're going to see that. Uh, more initiatives between the two governments to take care of the health and safety and well-being of our great peoples and all free, free people everywhere. So I'm very bullish about it, and I'm delighted that the president as making this special gesture of um, welcoming Prime Minister Modi at his hometown, in his home, in Delaware, and then immediately following that with a quad summit. Uh, I would argue to you, Vishnuji, that this quad meeting is more important than the UN General Assembly meetings uh, in terms of the strategic impact uh, for the United States and possibly also for India. Absolutely. Um, you know, the Pannun issue is something that's come up in the last 24, 48 hours once again. Uh, there is a sense that it's not a deal breaker. It's not, not a showstopper in, in the context of the overall strategic relationship between India and the United States. That's my reading. Is that your uh, sense as well? Yes, I agree, because Washington and Delhi are compelled to cooperate with one another. The world's two greatest democracies, working with their uh, allies and partners, have to uphold essentially the established order, which has been good for you and for us and so for so many people around the world, in the face of what is now an increasingly concerted Russian, Chinese, North Korean, Iranian, and terroristic threat to that established order. So whether we like it or not, whatever our problems may be, we are compelled toward greater strategic, economic, and technological convergence. And it's happening faster and faster. Certainly the member companies of USIBC, Indian and American, are being caught up in it in terms of life sciences, in terms of cybersecurity, semiconductors, artificial intelligence, and so much else, where frankly, Vishnu, the free world has to get it right because our enemies will, will contest to try to get it wrong and to leave humanity in a very dark way. So yes, there can be problems between uh, you know uh, two great democracies that are as layered and diverse as ours are, but I think that the governments realize they have to address their problems in a spirit of partnership and they are doing so. They're doing so with maturity. And I expect that there will be further such problems between two vast countries like ours. But we have learned how to deal with one another in resolving these problems. And we also do it within the backdrop of a very great and rising strategic compulsion. Uh, Ambassador Keshap, uh, the Prime Minister was in Russia some time back. He was in Ukraine quite recently. Um, you know, this is important uh, because uh, India, uh, it's not just India, but perhaps the Global South does see India as playing an important role in potentially bringing an end to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, or even if not bringing to an end, but at least starting the process where both sides get on the table and start earnestly talking about peace. I was in Kiev recently. I didn't really see very many signs in Ukraine that they were, um, you know, very close to that stage. But do you believe that India does have a role? I think India, as the world's largest democracy, absolutely can have a role. And certainly it has privileged relations with many countries as a leader of the global south. And so, you know, I commend and applaud any effort by anybody to try to end what is an absolutely disastrous and ruinous war, uh, a war that has done colossal damage in Europe, uh, particularly to the people of Ukraine, but also now increasingly to the people of Russia and to the economies of every country around the world. But this is a war that was started by one man, and it is a war that can end in one minute based on the decision of one man. And if uh, any party can get Mr. Putin to end his disastrous and misguided war, 
uh, and improve the prospects for humanity in Europe and everywhere. Uh, I wish them the greatest of success. Ambassador, let's just flip to, uh, to another potential conflict, Taiwan. Uh, the fact that we're seeing unprecedented uh, expansion as far as Chinese maritime activity is concerned, and certainly shipbuilding is something which all of us are observing. Um, they are in a status of near parity with the U.S. Navy, unthinkable just a few years back. Japan has all sorts of concerns. Prime Minister Kishida has referred to that in a joint statement uh, with, uh, with President Biden uh, today, earlier on. Um, Again, how is there the, the, the broader convergence among coordinations on the growth of China militarily and strategically? So this is why, Vishnu, the Quad Summit is so important. And as I said earlier, uh, strategically, it is, for Americans at least, I think, even more important than the UN General Assembly happening next week in New York. The Quad stands for something positive. It stands for the power and potential uh, of all of our free and great democratic nations. It stands for the future, a happy future for humanity. It stands for freedom, openness, uh, sovereignty, prosperity. Uh, it's, it stands as a great symbol of solidarity to countries like the Philippines that are facing constant, constant bullying and aggression from the Chinese, who are, of course, a much, much, much bigger pol polity. And so I think the president... Uh, going out of his way to host the Quad Summit uh, in his last innings as president uh, in his hometown uh, sends a very strong signal of the durability and the relevance and the importance and the staying power of the Quad and the relevance of the Quad to all of the people of the Indo-Pacific. A final question, uh, the US-India, uh, the US-IBC, which, uh, which you head, um, it looks after this incredibly important economic relationship at one level. You, you, you know, in a sense, it's your job to push the economic relationship between the two sides. The Prime Minister will be meeting several leading CEOs as well in New York. Um, could you tell us about the importance of that meeting, of those meetings? It's a roundtable, as I understand it. Sure. And Vishnu, it's not a job. It's my dharma. I have to push for greater ties between the U.S. and India because the extent to which our two great democracies can optimize their economic, strategic, and technological potential means that the great democracies will prevail in this great struggle of the 21st century against forces that are essentially trying to roll us back toward barbarism and trying to erode civilization. So the work of the Indian and American members of USIBC is absolutely critical in establishing the life sciences, pharmaceuticals, and vaccine supply chains that will take care of our people, especially in times of crisis, ensuring that the supply chains are safe and resilient and secure. We are at the forefront of ensuring the semiconductor production will take place in ways that, are, that don't make our economies vulnerable. Defense and aerospace uh, capabilities also, munitions development and production, and so much else besides clean and renewable energy fintech, the list goes on and on. Our companies trust one another. Our governments trust one another. The initiative on critical and emerging technologies is driving that technological convergence forward. And it is simply because we have learned since the pandemic that not only can we trust one another and rely on one another, but there are frankly certain countries and economies that we cannot trust. And so for American and Indian companies, they are the future of the implementation of the vision of our great leaders, because there's no Chinese or Russian company that represents the future happiness and prosperity of humanity. It is American and Indian people working together to innovate a free and bright future for humanity. And that is the sacred role uh, of all of these companies in working toward that brighter future and for USIBC as well. All right, Ambassador Keshap, uh, always uh, wonderful speaking to you. We do look forward to a strong bilateral agreement or se set of agreements between India and the United States. That's going to come up in the next couple of hours. Let's see where this uh, takes the relationship uh, that you know we've seen really prosper over the years.